Hello everybody, and we're about to start our last episode of our first impression series of Tokyo Xanadu. And let's load up the game here. It's been a pretty fun ride so far. But as we continue on with this last episode, I'll try to give a full opinion of if I would want to continue playing or not. Good. I think this will be our first time actually doing some combat. And switch partners with the triangle button. That's kind of cool. Okay, jump. Okay. Jump. Dodge. Attack. Okay, there is no lock on, so you just kind of have to... Your potion obtained. Nice. Okay. Awesome. Lunar mutton. What is lunar mutton? A flavorful meat found on the eclipse infused with the power of the moon and is impervious to spoilage. Interesting. I wonder if it's for like upgrading something. Like we have a lockdown room. New enemies. Should be to fire, wind, steel, spirit, and shadow. Affinities between the different elements. Okay, so fire is strong against wind. Okay, fire beats wind, wind beats spirit. Spirit is good against fire, and shadow is effective against shadow. Okay, interesting. Oh, we, you can lock on by tapping L1. Nice. There we go. About kill bonuses. In certain conditions when defeating an enemy or in a kill bonus. Okay, battle page entries now available. Oh, jump right into that one. Dodge is R1. It's going to be interesting to remember. Just for fun, let's try a new style. Oh, what is this guy? Range skills, okay. Okay, weak against fire. Nice. 
Skill points are consumed when using a character's special skill to regenerate over time. Okay, so as you fight, you're using your skill points and you get your skill points back as you fight with your melee weapon, I believe. Ambrosia. Oh, nice. The combat is a little different, it's just because of the buttons, but it is interesting. Look, it's pretty fluid as you interact. Yeah, resurrection. Assume that if one of your comrades dies. Recovery medicine infused with revival magic and a cure potion still. It's interesting having the dodge BR1, but <laughs> still getting used to that. But overall, pretty. Okay, let's see here. There we go. Enjoy it. From the real world is inside. Chloe, Chloe tunic. I'm not sure how you equip that actually. Do the power of wind, that's kind of cool. Yeah. 
Another battle room. Oh, he's a bigger trolley orky. This mutated version is especially powerful. Defeat it and the berry will fall. Oh boy. Closer here. Okay, nice. Gift cubes. Defeating an S tier greed while exploring may cause a gift cube to appear. By smashing one, can obtain the rare materials possessed by the defeated S greed. Okay. Oh, nice. A whole bunch of items. Yep, looks like we've reached the end of this little dungeon. S rank, nice. Once you clear a dungeon, you will be graded on your efforts. Clear time, damage ratio, greed defeated, etc. shop here we can buy stuff. Cure potion, always need more of those. a big open room. Tends to lead to some type of fight happening soon, I would think. Sure is not looking good. Coming. Well, that's a big old monster. Menace Ogre, Elder Creed. I guess it'd be like a boss or something. Okay. Let's see, what is this thing weak to? 
Okay, V. What is V? Potion here. Closer. L1 and R1 together, active X strike. Pretty cool, not not too bad. Convergence and eclipse. Okay, I think this is probably a great stopping point for us. We got through what looks like like the first dungeon area and a little mini boss of some kind and kind of go over what we have felt as we've been playing the game for three episodes definitely an intriguing story telling process it looks like you're going to be going through a lot of characters lots of dialogue some of it's kind of funny <laughs> so i think that would be kind of a cool thing to carry on throughout the game and i wonder what kind of characters you meet along the way probably new characters and like they help you potentially in these dungeons. I wonder if you can switch between three or four or even five characters at a time. And the combat system is pretty interesting actually because you are using two characters, maybe more as you progress through the story. Each person has their own abilities. It's very fast, very fluid. And after you get used to the dodging and the lock on and all of that, it's not too bad. And let's see, anything else? Um, Visually, it's pretty cool looking. I would say it's kind of like a Kind of like a visual novel style almost, which is kind of kind of nice. Um, sound, the music is very interesting. I can see this is probably going to be a very energetic game as you play it. Like the music is going to always be fast, and then it's going to slow down during the maybe the more serious parts of the game. But overall, let's see. Would I continue playing it? I probably would because it seems to be it's going to be a fun time. I think. I could see this getting to be pretty advanced as you get through all the skills and all the materials that you start picking up. The combat probably opens up pretty nicely. You probably have to go between the melee stuff and the ranged stuff, and then it probably opens up pretty well. 
and at the price point, I think it was 23 or 24 dollars on Amazon, I think that's fine, because I assume this is a long game. I could say it's probably at least 20 plus, 30 plus hours, based on the types of games that these tend to be. And if you can get it on sale, even better. But overall, as a first impression, I had a fun time. It's definitely an interesting story. I do wonder if any of these like bosses get like pretty crazy hard. The first one wasn't too bad, but if they do get challenging, that just adds to the fun of the game. Overall, I would recommend it off of a first impression. And that is the conclusion of our first impression series of Tokyo Xanadu. I'd like to thank everybody for tuning in, and we'll be talking again real soon.